So that's what's going on. Yeah, I bet. It's, so how's that going? Uh, it's not as fun as creating the comic book. <laughs> you know, this, this this is this is like you hit the wall when you're running a marathon. Right. Where you're just trying to push through it. I mean, you want to get a good product out. You want to get it to the people in time, but it just takes forever and ever and ever. And I don't want to make the mistake of sending stuff out and get damaged in the mail. That, right. That, that's what I'm afraid of, too, especially for the. It's taken a while for the sculptures because I've been reinforcing the boxes and trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. Just right. To make sure it just gets to the people correctly. Because I hate for somebody to tell me, oh, yeah, uh, the sculpture was all cracked and stuff. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, that would kind of suck. It, it, it would really suck. I mean, I know, man. But I mean, I'm kind of <laughs> gun shy because of what happened with me with the, with the post office and the comics. Right. Uh, I just barely fulfilled. Everybody got their comics. I mean, I, I got a whole bunch that I need to get to me. I mean, it's it's really sad how how bad it was. Yeah, my phone's going off. <laughs> <laughs> no worry about it. Do what you do, man. Uh, you know how it is. You gotta take care of people. It's the VIP. <laughs> oh, you gotta answer that. Yeah, you know what happened last time. Yep, you got all caps. You got all caps. Speaking of which, we got Evan in the house. Chilling downstairs. So how's Evan doing, man? What's going on, Mr. Evan? As you can see, it's just me and Manny chilling for now. Eventually, people will, you know, they'll jump on in a minute. So we're just gonna do what we do. I'm still trying to ink this piece. And uh, keep an eye out on to see who's gonna come up. <laughs> kind of local sport going to join the house from YouTube. What's going on, brother man? How you doing? We're sitting here chilling, sitting here chilling, man. <laughs> trying to get this, uh, trying to get this piece inked. You know, I got a, I got an interesting uh, message today, man. What's up, Eric? How you doing, brother? Thanks for joining the stream, man. We're waiting on hopefully Trusty and them to come in in a little minute. So y'all enjoy the stream. Kick back. And it says, again, some work done. I haven't seen you around a lot lately. How you been? I've been doing good, man. I, I took a, a breather. And speaking of which, now I got a phone call from the wife. So hold on for one second, fellas. Well, that means I got to step in. <laughs> Do I got to step in and start talking? Oh Lord, let me go bring up stuff I don't even know. I, I can't even see the. Let me bring this up so I can see what's happening in the audience. Click on this. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that you already. Trusty! Trusty's out there. Mm -hmm. Ara's out there. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Ara? Trusty! Uh oh, I can hear myself. Better turn that off. All right. So All right, I'm back. You're back. Well, we're, we're, <laughs> Sorry you know, about that. It's funny is when you said you had to go, I just came back. So there wasn't no dead silence. <laughs> no, no, I heard you. I heard you. I heard you pop up real quick. Oh, I appreciate that. I, I am sharing it out now on the Twitterverse. All I right. appreciate that, man. It's like, oh no, because my wife, she knows that I stream on Thursdays, but. She doesn't care. <laughs> well, well, my wife called me and she said, I don't, I don't, she was real fast. She's like, I said, oh, what's going on? She goes, oh, I didn't want to bother you because I know you might be on air. I'm like, okay, you don't yeah, have to call me that fast. Yeah, let me check StreamYard and make sure there's nobody in the green room. All right, nobody's in the green room. Yeah, that's a pain in the butt. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> I got, um, I got an interesting, uh, message today man and uh mm -hmm. yeah a friend of mine was telling me um that john leguizamo mm -hmm. wants to do a whole latin um comic book series franchise thing 
And I was like, what? Well, and I told him, I said, dude, you wanna you wanna back a Rican that's doing something? So I showed him the, the piece that Trusty did for me, you know, for the boy mm -hmm. And He was like, I didn't know you was trying to do one. I said, yeah, man. I mean, just just because they got the star power and they got the money, don't mean they're the only people that are trying to uh, to do some stuff, you know. Hmm. So, you know, he's like, all right, cool. So he's like, whenever I, whenever I get it going, he's definitely gonna be a supporter. So that's one. I got Ooh. one supporter. One supporter. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it starts, buddy. That's how it starts. One just at a time. One. Type. Hey, Justin Regan and his comics in the house, man. How do you get around the RMTP block? Okay, so the 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 only way I got around the RMTP block is I had it from the very beginning, and I never disabled it. So it, I guess, I guess they having their IT department is not that great, and I'm grandfathered into it. Uh -oh. So that's how I get around the RMTP block. Yeah, everybody else can't do it apparently for some reason, <laughs> but for some reason I can. So it is what it is. Uh oh, Manny about to break out the guitar? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's how I get around the RMTP block. Um, see, trustees in the house, getting some work done, haven't been around a lot lately. Yeah, I've been good, man. I, I took last week off. Um, I, need, I needed to dead a breather, and next week I'll be out of town, so... You know, I'm not gonna be on. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This this week, uh, <laughs> this week I'm on. So, you know, it's it's you know, I'm just trying to get some things done here and there. And uh, so this week, <laughs> excuse me. So, so this week uh, I'll be streaming. You know, and then boom, next week I'll be out of town doing Thanksgiving with the in-laws, and then week after that I'll be back. Cool. And then we'll be doing back. We'll be going back to the two streams a month. I mean, two streams a week for me. Uh, I'm most likely to just do one stream a week. I don't know what day I'm going to pick. It might just be a stream of thought. Hey, let's do it today. Let's do it. Whatever. So, yeah. The Aloha Dingo Hour is coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it says, I guess people should have taken your advice when you offered it. Hey, look, man. All I know is that um, if not, I can use OBS with, with the old school Google mm -hmm. Hangouts. And you know, and and sometimes that's a good idea, but like when it's just uh, when it's just a couple of people on the stream, less than less than five or six. All right, just a Rican man. Everybody had to go through that. <laughs> Manny's wife called, then my wife called, now your wife is calling. Yeah, man. But um, Maranya says, Manny E, trusty. Hey, Maranya Volcanan. What was for dinner today? Cool. I had do, 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 do. I had a uh, red robin. Red robin. Yeah, my wife red is out. Red robin. Yum. Yeah, my wife mm. was gone for the. Hey, the old uh, Doing her. Uh, she's getting prepped for that trip for Thanksgiving, so she's getting her nails did and all that stuff. Oh, Lordy. So when I'm home, but you know, if I'm not gonna cook, then I'm just gonna order out. I hate cooking. I just cook because I have to. <laughs> Where is my tape? I don't know. If sure. I don't put tape, it's just going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to do the commission. I got to get this out because we got this beautiful skunk girl and then she's going up against this guy in the back. I don't know who this guy is. Who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> is that you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is that supposed to be me? That's the Puerto Rican here, man. <laughs> the is that Rican my here. book? That is your commission, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. I like it. Figure you like it. Something right up your alley. So you don't just yeah, get people. drunk girl. You get your Puerto Rican here there, too. They're facing off against each other. That's awesome, man. Ryan says, chef salad and cook and cuties. Those California mandarin oranges. I'm beating the 
I'm beating back the bug to try to bite me. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm feeling the same way. I'm a little, <clears throat> I don't know. It got super cold that I went out and then, um, and then I got the, the, the scratchy throaty thingy, you know, I got that right now. You know, like, ah, like, oh no, which, which ain't good, man. Uh -oh. It's just no good. No good. Yeah, man. But you know, um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep an eye on the green room and try to <laughs> try to work on these yeah. these little inks and one. Yeah, I, I I was like, man, that's terrible. And then on top of that, I parked at the hospital, and you know, um, my car got the the mirrors that fold in and out when you get in and out the car, <laughs> and somebody somebody jammed my mirror, so now it doesn't fold in or out. Oh, don't so, you just um, love that? I was like, man. So now mm. I'm, I'm mad because now um. I could set up an appointment, and uh, but I won't be here because I'll be out of town. So now I gotta wait till I come back from out of town to set up the appointment, which kind of sucks. Dude, I, I had my car for less than a month, and somebody with some car, either car or truck, and just freaking opened their door, and there's a nice gouge in my fender. <sighs> I know, man. Oh, psh, when the Camaro, man, the, I had the Camaro for a week. And someone backing out the parking lot took my fender along with them. Oh, God. That was an expensive bumper to fix, dude. Dude, I'm just living with the dent. I mean, it's sickening seeing that dent on there. I mean, now, I know, I know. I mean, now the car is five years old. There's scratches all over it. Yeah, but yeah. No, but, it's a brand new car. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It, it, when it's I, brand new. And you wash it every week, and you know every single inch of that car. And you're like, wait a minute, that wasn't there. But when they take your bumper and it's laying on the floor, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Why would you not even leave a note and say, hey, you know what? I jacked your bumper up. I'm sorry. Here's my insurance information. Yeah, that sucks. So I had to, I had to pay for my insurance. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, it was like a lot of money. That is horrible. It was horrible. I was very heartbroken because <laughs> I had a car. Like, Dude. I have I have bad luck with black cars, but I keep buying black cars. Dude, my black Mustang, which my wife drives now, that car was paid off. It it di it didn't even have sixty thousand miles on it. I parked the car in my driveway and it got hit. Ah, oh, you kidding me? Dude, I didn't want to get out of bed. I was so freaking heartbroken. I was like, the car's paid off. It's less than 60,000 miles. It's a V8. It's going to last another 10 years. Yeah, right. I don't have to worry about getting another, you know, another uh, car payment. And, oh, man, I thought for sure they was going to total it. I mean, it was horrible. The whole passenger side was just smashed. I'm like, there's no way they're going to fix this. Uh, they fixed it. I can't believe they fixed it. I still can't believe they fixed it. Hey, look, good, good for you, though, that they fixed it, right? Well, good for me, but then I went on and bought that 2014 Mustang. Oh, oh. speaking of Mustangs, Ford is going electric. Yeah. I'll, Mustang I'll, Mach -E. Looks like an SUV Mustang. I, I was listening to you guys the other day. Yep. Yeah. I, I didn't look at see what it looks like, but I... It I looks it looks like an SUV with the Mustang oh. logo in the front. Well, that's wrong. Well, you know what? Ford said they were going to stop doing anything that wasn't F-150 or Mustangs because their their other cars are just not selling. Like Dude, the Escorts and the Focuses and all that other stuff. The dirty secret is their Mustang ain't selling either. Yeah, that's probably why they went with that. Um, yeah, because the Mustang, the newer version of the fifth generation, is mm -hmm. not selling at all. The fourth generation, the one that no, the sixth generation, uh, the fourth generation, the fifth generation, the one that I got the 2005 2014, that's mm -hmm. sold like hotcakes. They couldn't keep them. Once they switched over in 2015, they can't sell them. Yeah, they, they, uh, they, they're just my, sitting on the lots. And my wife betrayed me. Uh oh, yeah, she wants a Mustang Bullet. Oh, that's a good car, man. I know. 
Oh and that's a, uh, hopefully she wants a uh, fifth generation, not this sixth generation. No, no, no. She wants, yeah. She she wants she wants the older the better. She wants old school classic muscle. Well, when you she talk got, about the Mach One, I mean that's still my one of my favorite cars of all time is the 1970 Fastback Mach One. Yeah, I know. Mm. I pushed one of those when it ran out of gas for like two miles. Man, them things ain't no <laughs> joke. <laughs> It wasn't even mine. It was my brother's. <laughs> he ran out of gas. What? Called and uh and uh, so he came and got me because he wasn't too far. But the gas station was two miles away. The house was closed, but the hot the gas station was. Man, I pushed that thing for a long time. Man, I felt like I was gonna die. Was it, was it an old school Mach One? Yeah, yeah, old school Mach One. Ooh. What year? See, see, he's saying, sure did. It was mine. <laughs> he's what, over there. What year, what hey, year Willie, was what, it? Willie, what year was that? Was that Mach One that you make me push for like two miles? I'm, 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 he's he's actually listening to the to the stream, so hopefully he'll answer. Because I don't even remember to be honest with you. All I remember is I had to push that thing. And that's all I remember. That's that's 1970. He says. Ooh, that's 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 my dream car, dude. That's my dream car. Uh, he had one. Oh, he had one. I bet he wish he still had it. Probably does. Boy, he was like 19, 20 when he had it. Oh man, that was a that's a sweet ride. Yeah, it was nice. Now, don't get me wrong, it was a nice car. Yeah, that's what Skunk Row drives in the but, car. Uh, it was a nice car. Don't get me wrong. But what that thing. What kind of engine did you have in there? Uh, he they, yeah, like that was his car. Let me see. Hey, Willie, what kind of engine you have in that thing? He says he does wish he had it. <laughs> and yep, <laughs> he says he does wish he still had it. Hopefully, he had a 351 Cleveland. You know, awesome. I, I don't even remember what. I honestly don't. He said I should have kept it, and it was eight cylinders. But I don't know what kind of engine he had, to be honest with you. He was more of a motorhead than I was. I'm, I'm not really a motorhead. I just like fast cars. I, I don't. I'm not a gearhead. Like I don't. I don't get down and dirty fixing cars and restoring and stuff like that. I just no. like. I just like fast cars. That's what I get. Got to get back into. I got to go fix up my Mustangs. Oh, breathable skunk girl! If Santa leaves your Dodge Charger, he does not love you. He does not love you. Dodges. <laughs> Always break down. Kind of said he said the engine correctly. It was a 351. 351 Cleveland or Windsor? Uh, now you, now you, got, <laughs> you know that dude old like us. You gonna you gonna have him over there racking his brains trying to figure it out. But yeah, Skunky, don't don't get a charger. Please please don't get a charger. Please. I know the she's are always she, breaking she, down. She's only got a Mustang GT. Yeah, that only has 300 horsepower. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the Chargers probably got more than that. Uh, if you got the Hemi, if you got just a regular, they're about the same. Kind of local said it was a Cleveland. Awesome. And, uh, and Miranda saying hi to Skunk Girl. Miranda. <laughs> Cano says, oh, no, I remember because I regret not keeping it. Yeah, you would have kept <laughs> that. That thing would have been off the chain right now. That thing would have been off the chain. No, nah, but I'm definitely, after I after everything said and done, I definitely want to get some, like, an old-school Chevelle, old-school Mustang, uh, you know, stuff like that. But for now, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep a touch of modern because they're faster and they're already built. <laughs> and they're more reliable. <laughs> yeah. And and that's what I like, but if but don't do Dodge, man. I mean, I'm not hating on Dodges. It's just that when I was researching to buy the Camaro, it was between the Dodge, the Camaro, <clears throat> and, and a Mustang, right? It was a 5.0 Mustang, the Camaro that I had, and, and um, what was it? The Charger um, SRT Scatback, which is I think is the, is their fast charger Scatback. <clears throat> the SRTs are like uh, they're 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 the fast one, but they're not. They're like the beginning of the fast ones. They're not <laughs> top of the tier faster chargers. Yeah. 
Yeah. But anyway, um, so I started doing research, right? And uh, and I started noticing a trend between Dodge owners. <laughs> like, my car broke less than a month after having it. I was like, well, that's not good, right? But then the Chevy people were like, no, nah, man, I love my Camaro. No problems, no issues. I was like, okay, I could deal with that. Because, you know, them things are not cheap to fix. None of those cars are cheap to fix. <laughs> you get a you get a muscle car, sports car, whatever you performance car, whatever you want to call it. They're not cheap to fix. Nothing, nothing on them is an easy is a cheap fix. Nope. It's kind of like owning a Mercedes or a, or a BMW. Them things are not cheap to fix. You get a car like that, you got to understand that the maintenance bill is gonna smack you in the back. Yeah, the Red Eye Hellcat is the fastest of the Dodges. Yeah. It is. In the Speed Racer movie, the last one should have been the Mach 7, but they called it Mach 6, as I recall. <clears throat> yeah, man, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed the hell out of my Camaro. Uh, it was till I moved here, of course, and then I had nowhere to open up, which still makes me hard. I, I, still, I still haven't opened up my Mustang. But it, I mean, at least you have a road for it, right? Like there, if you wanted to, you had a road. Oh yeah. I mean, where where I live, I live. There's a there's a highway right above me that I can go down one side of the highway, make sure there's no police officer on the other side of the highway, and just rip it. Which Hell I did here. with my 05 Mustang. I got that up to 120 something miles an hour. That is ripped yeah. with that one. But, but the one that I got now, the 2014, mm-hmm. I don't even think I got over 80 miles yet. It's like I'm married now. I've got a kid. <laughs> I'm not stupid anymore. Right. <laughs> I mean, I just like the power. You know, I mean, when I want to make that left turn at a tra- traffic light, I'm going to make that re- left turn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's one thing that does make me mad. Like, like nobody knows how to make a left turn. Yeah, it's like when you got a four banger, it's like, uh oh, I gotta wait. You gotta <laughs> like, <move. laughs> it's like, why can't people make a left turn? It's not that hard. I'm getting so mad. Dude, what gets me more mad is I was at a stop. Me and my wife was at a stoplight the other day. And I'm, I kid you not, not even. Two seconds after the light turns, the guy's beeping a horn at me. I was like, I looked at my wife. I was like, serious? Oh, I was I was not a happy camper. And I was not good dog press at that time. It was bad dog? Bad dog. Did we, free, did we freeze on the? No. No, I don't so, think so. So I was a bad dog. So I, I kind of went really slow through the intersection and kind of, I was going like 15 miles an hour going up the road to our house. <laughs> uh, Skunk Girl says, you're embarrassing me. I'm like, I don't care. This guy does not. He's going to learn a lesson. Don't be honking your horn at me. <laughs> he's not like me. Dude, like, I, I, was, I was hoping that he was going to try to overtake me because I'm like, dude, <laughs> dude you're going to try to overtake me in a Jeep when I've got a 5.0. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the... That's, it's not like me. Like when somebody try does something to, to make me like try to cut me off or something, I just punch it. And then like if we get into a two lane road where they can't pass me, then I just slow. That's what I was doing, man. And just make them fester. They get so mad back there, <laughs> you know. And if I don't want them to pass me, and if they try to pass me on a two lane road, then I then I hover with them, so they can't. They have to either break. Or hit me, one of the two, you know. So they always had to always have to break and get behind me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, and I was like, yeah, you, you messing with the wrong one. Especially them uh, people that got them like the F one fifties and them Dodge Rams because they got a, you know, they got three point six liter V eight, so they're thinking it's the same as a uh, six point two liter. I'm like, nobody, yeah, it's too it's freaking not. heavy. It's, it's not. They got heavy cars. Come on, you can't be doing that. <laughs> I said, y'all, y'all think you got a fast car. Yeah, your truck has got power, but no, no, yeah. no. 
just stop. Stop embarrassing yourself with your little hillbilly truck. Don't do it. Don't do it. Kay always used to get mad at me. <laughs> well, I, I don't got no hillbilly truck. I got some, I got a lot of horsepower in the me in that 5.0. Mm-hmm. You don't, I mean, Let's yeah. See. You you can you can get a Corvette that's gonna beat it, but you're gonna pay like twice as much. Yeah, Corvettes are expensive. The ZL1 is expensive too. Like if you if you're looking at ZL1 money, you might as well just go ahead and get the Corvette. A ZL1 is like seventy five to eighty thousand dollars. That's crazy. Yeah, but, but some of the damn Mustangs that's coming out is pretty expensive too. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're all getting like that. Let's see. Funny story. I misheard the name of the car for years. I saw it was called the Mach 5 instead of the Mac 5. <laughs> I hear you. That's, the, that's what uh, Mar Maran is saying. Yeah, no, nah, man, you know, but here's, here's the thing is, like, people used to get mad at me, like, because, uh, like, if, if the guy with a 5.0 would come, you know, would park next to me or whatever, I'd say, man, nice car. They was like, better than your Camaro. I said, no, nah, man, I just like Ooh. American also, man. You don't have to worry about it. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get with you like that. <laughs> what is wrong with that person? I've never told somebody, oh, yeah, my Mustang's better than your Camaro. I never, I'm the kind of guy that dislikes muscle cars. Yeah, me too. Like, I, uh, I prefer my Mustang, but if I had another another car to, to pick up, if I had all the money in the world, I'd, I'd, I'd love to have a Barracuda. Ooh, dude. Barracuda. Could yeah. That's Barracuda 1970, that is an awesome car. Yeah, it's very iconic. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the way that looks. I mean, that's why I kind of like the new Challengers also. Yeah, the new Challengers are nice. And the funny thing is the Chargers used to look like the Challengers yep. <clears throat> back in the day. And I don't know what they, why they, I mean, they're nice looking cars. Don't get me wrong. They're very nice looking cars, but I just don't get why they shortened it into like a sedan. Yeah. Hey, but it, it worked for them. It's still going. Yeah, I mean, no, it's a it's a nice design. It, it's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice design. Very nice. I'm not mad at them, but if you if you go back <clears throat> to the old Chargers, they look more like Challengers. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why I was like, ah, eh, you know, eh. But I get it. I ain't mad at them. Shoot, they're making money. <laughs> if they can keep them on the road. <laughs> me it's like who's they making money if they can keep them on the road <clears throat> yeah i'm not doing that my next car is gonna be a different car very 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 very, very different very different you know uh your girl poke fire was like hey have you received the uh, skunk girl yet? I said, nah, man, because uh, I said I was telling her that <clears throat> when you back at higher tiers, you gotta you gotta give the um, the creator time. Because, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't I don't want to rush this. I mean, I want to yeah, make sure that this looks good. <laughs> you gotta you gotta give him time because mm -hmm. it's not like you back the book at twenty five bucks, you just get the book. He can just ship that out right away. Mm -hmm. But if you got like a sketch cover or you you got the bust or you got other stuff. The more stuff you order, the more you know, the more lenient you have to be because those things take time. Yeah, I mean, I got one person that that backed the upper tier to O Henry and twice. So for that person, I'm gonna do a real special. You know, I'm gonna do a triptych. You know, nice. You know, three sketch covers together. <clears throat> so that's what I'm gonna do for that person. I told him, give me some time. I want to make sure it's good. I don't want to just give you some piece of, you know, something that, oh, yeah, I did it in 30 minutes. No, I want to make sure, you know, it, it take my time. So when he gets it, he's like, oh, yeah, that was, it was worth the wait. Oh, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> she wanted spoilers. She wanted to know what, the, you know, she wanted to know the book. I was like, look, you're just going to have to wait. You're just uh, going to have to wait. The only people I know for sure got the book so far is Edwin, uh, 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 KG, Risey Lee, and uh, Crypto Comics got his his too. Oh wow! Well, crypt, crypto is is on the West Coast. That's why. So, and I'm, I'm not West Coast. Him. Everybody knows he's from the West Coast. <clears throat> yeah, that's yeah. Not him. You know, 
Maybe what's going girl says, many mail from Hawaii may take about three weeks. So I have yeah. gotten it for local people or for instance, it was shipped differently. Yeah. I was trying to tell Josh about media mail. He was like, no, but I need my, my thing to be protected. I said, it can be protected. All you have to do is tell him it's media. You know, it's like, no, but it needs to be super protected. What are you going to do? Put it in a Sherman tank? Dude, put, put them in those Geminis. Those Geminis are rock solid. That's what I told him. I said, do a Gemini mailer. He yeah. was like, what's that? I was like, oh, all right. Dude, he should know what a Gemini mailer is. I'll tell him how to get it. I mean, <clears throat> especially for you guys, you guys get free shipping. So it's actually cheaper for you guys to order it. I had to pay for shipping. But still, you're paying for shipping and the price was way, I mean, it was to me, it was worth it. So it came <clears> out <throat> like a dollar each. But for you guys, yeah. it's only going to come out to 50 cents each because you guys aren't paying for shipping. Oh, Contin wow. Continental United States, you're not going to pay for shipping. Then you order it through, where did I order it through? I order it on eBay, believe it or not, because Amazon wouldn't ship it to me. But what? even Amazon, you can you can order from Amazon if you're in the 48 states and there's no shipping cost. Hmm. You can do that. But I had to go through eBay. So it cost me $90. About a hundred dollars for the for the Gemini mailers, but then I had to spend another hundred dollars to ship it to me. Right. So a dollar each, okay? Big deal to me. I rather put it in the dollar thing and make sure it gets to the person not damaged, than having to. I'm going to have to pay for another one to ship out to the person. And now, nah. right? You know, pay the. I mean, that's the whole thing. That's the reason why I went with the eighty pound paper. That's why I went with the hundred thirty pound cover that's why i went with the full color you know i'm like i want to make sure when people get the book they're not going to say oh that was a waste of money this guy you know just gave me a crappy product no oh, we know better we know better you know, i mean i was not out to make money on this i was <laughs> i mean it's it's reputation that's all this is it's making, reputation making, is important man yeah so yeah i mean the book might not be perfect there could be some things I could have drew a little bit better, but that will come in time. I mean, I know for sure. I mean, you look at this skunk girl here, and you're gonna look at some of the artwork in the in the comic book. He's like, "Hey, what happened here?" Well, that was drawn four months ago. I've improved since then. You know, that's just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know what I mean? I mean, the last page. You can tell the very last panel is like. Damn it, Manny, you did that before you put that through the printers. You can tell I made sure the last panel was pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's I mean, see. Uh, your wife says Manny has shipped most of everyone, so it's coming. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> the only people I did not ship was some of the people that we knew because I wanted to give a little extra special things to certain people. So they didn't get their books, but they're, they're going to get it. I'm going to ship out again on Saturday. So nice. all the sculptures go out on Saturday. All the people I missed go out on Saturday. Then the only people I need to fulfill is the old Henry. And the old Henry is pretty much the real upper tier guys. And yeah. that's it. Right. And it says old Henry was a decent candy bar back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, old Henry has to do it. He's a character <laughs> in the book. And uh, Marcus Givens is in the house saying hello, E, and chat. Hello, Marcus. Thank you for joining us this yeah. wonderful evening. You know how we do, man. We always we always kick the show off, and we go regardless, regardless. We don't we don't pull no punches. We just keep going. Yeah. So, yeah, man. So that's awesome, dude. I, I actually cannot wait to receive it <clears throat> myself. You know. And I uh, get a chance to flip through it and read it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I said, cheeseburgers at the digital bullpen, righteous Thursday. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you some French fries if I could get to my computer right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, y'all loves that. Let's see what we got going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh oh, do we have booster in here? I don't think so. I hear, mm hmm, mm hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I was clearing my throat. <laughs> yeah, I've got a little sniffles if you can you can hear that. Yeah, it's like and, my and my throat is getting a little bit raw. 
Yeah, that's, that's the way I'm feeling. And I was like, ah, man, and just the, the weekend is coming around, and this is how I feel. Ugh. Yeah. So I'm intrigued to see, man. Let's see. Marcus, we're all doing good. How are you doing? How you doing, brother? <clears throat> I've been I've been taking it easy and um been, like I said, I'm still doing minimal stuff on social media and online and whatnot, but I've been, I've been kind of I, working and whatnot. I know somebody who's doing really minimum stuff on social media. Oh yeah, who's that? <laughs> uh me. I've been kind of like AWOL. <laughs> it's like, where's Manny? Uh yeah, I mean, that's true, but I'm glad to see you here <clears throat> drawing again. Well, that's that's the whole thing. I mean, it really took a lot out of me this last this last month has been ups and downs trying to get this book out. You know, yeah. dealing with the printers, dealing with what happened with the book. I'm still dealing with that. That is it is horrible what happened with the book. You know. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you're not the only one. 290 copies were ruined, and I'm waiting for the printers to send me those 290 copies. Mm. Yeah, it's that bad. So people will get their books. I did overprint. I mean, that's all the money went into the book. I wasn't going to keep any money for myself. Right. So you guys saw that those toys that were shown at the beginning of, you know, my guitars. Those are my toys that came out of my pocket. Nobody supported that. <laughs> uh. Garth Osteen saying, is, uh, what's up, guys? Just call me Garth. All right, Garth, how you doing? How you doing? Marcus, is, Marcus, everybody's asking if you're uploading videos. Marcus is not uploading videos. I know he's not. He's been, he's been, he's been skipping out on me. What? Hey, Garth. Thanks for the lemon. Greatly appreciate it, my friend. Let me go back to StreamYard <laughs> and get the chat going. They don't have social media at the post office and printers. That's why Manny's not on it, <laughs> says Maranya. <laughs> Keep up the bad joke. Exactly. That's where I work. Yes, yes. That's where I work. Uh, I think yes. she meant because you're shipping books. Oh. Well, that, that was a joke from Brad. Manny works at the post office. Uh, there's, no, no, there's no shame in it, Manny. No shame in that. I'm just no, fortunately, I don't work at the post office. Yeah, me either. I, oh, man. I got, a, I got a letter. I mean, I got an email today about a nice job, but it's in Washington, uh, Washington D.C., not Washington State. Ooh, you don't want to do that. No, nah, I don't want to do that. But the job was like a, one of those very rare opportunities. Uh, rare opportunities, but do you really want to live there? I don't. And I can't anyway because my wife is stuck here for the next two years. So, because I didn't move because of me. I moved because right. of my wife. Right, right, right. I was like, damn. I was like, that's that's a heck of a job. Was how 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 good was the pay increase in percentage? <sighs> Better be I good. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty well paid now, so right. I think it would have been like a twenty percent pay increase. Uh, eh. Yeah, think about it. I'm still working off of North Carolina wages and living in this high cost of living place. That's why I'm. That's the only reason why I'm looking at a, a higher paying job, <laughs> because mm -hmm. my salary is not commensurate with the cost of living right now. But I like my job and I like the people I work with, even though I don't see them anymore or talk to them anymore or nothing anymore. <laughs> Let's see. Kano says, "Oh, America says, hey, Kano, don't know at the moment, but coming up with ideas to showcase." And Kano says, "I might need to get another job." Mm -hmm. The contract on this is on hold for now. Yeah, that's the bad thing about contracts. So Kano is your brother? Yeah, Kano's my brother. Cool. Yeah, he got his own little boxing 
sports YouTube channel he's trying to get off the ground. So he comes and visits, you know, gets support. <laughs> and I go on his YouTube videos and, you know, give him a little love here and there. Speaking of which, freaking, uh, so is Anthony, hmm? no, 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 go, go, go. Uh, I was going to ask my brother, Anthony Joshua, talking cash junk, kind of. He's saying he's going to knock out Ruiz. He said everybody going to have to bend the knee to him after he knock out Ruiz. Ooh. He's going to say he's the best. What are your thoughts, kind of local sports? Now you go ahead, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't sports related, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was just going to ask: Is there any dog stars on that other show that happens at the same time? You know what? I don't know. I'm not watching it. They didn't say anything. Um, they didn't say anything in the in the messages that they were going to be on there or not. Well, I just um, <clears throat> I I did look at the DMs before I came on tonight. And mm -hmm. damn, that was a very lively day today. Yeah, because usually, you know, usually, usually the dog stars is kind of quiet. It's like, oh, there's a lot of stuff to read there. <laughs> yeah, the thing is this, man. I keep hearing them, you know, like, man, why don't they do this? Man, why don't they do this? Why haven't they do this? the state of the show? Look, dude, if you don't like what's going on, do your own show. It's YouTube. Exactly. That's what you and I do. You we know, if you don't own thing. if you don't like what's going on with the show. Do your own show, you know, and use all the all the crit criticism you or all the constructive criticism that you're putting into all that effort you're putting into that long. I had to put it on mute. I had to mute you guys today. <laughs> <laughs> I like all that long conversation. Y'all could have just did your own show and called it a day, and use all those those pointers that you want to give out and apply them to your show. And if it works, awesome. He didn't put me on mute because I wasn't on social media all day long, people. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> I was like, geez, Louise. Uh, no, and, I mean, I get it. They they want they want the show, blah, 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 blah. I was like, dude, man, just just do your own thing, man. They they, they want the show to succeed. They they have their heart in it. They love it. Yeah. They like there. They like supporting the show. And they're just a little upset that it's the ratings are going down. But that's for everyone. But you know I mean, what? That's, that's this, is not, this is not the new exciting toy anymore. People had this toy for the last two years, and it it's kind of getting, you know, the shine is not there anymore. People are that, just leaving it. That's all it is. And that's to be expected. Yeah, it's and like that's to be you know, we're not we're not the new flavor in in town anymore. So un unless you totally into the drama and you want to do that kind of stuff, you know, people are just gonna say, oh, it's just a drawing show. Uh, they don't have, they don't have the people that used to come on the show anymore. So, it is what it is. It is what it is, homies. But yeah. and and like I said, I you know sometimes I just don't, I don't care. You know. Well, it's that's like, the whole thing. You and I don't care. We don't care how many people are watching us. Oh man, you threw my drawing on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's character. It's character. <laughs> <laughs> Book is okay. The book is okay. Make sure the book is okay. Book's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Damn, why did that fall? I, I don't know, man. That, hey, that fight that's about to happen on that on that cover is just too powerful. I got excited. Uh, yeah, I got isn't excited exciting? drawing her butt. <laughs> <laughs> we like big butts and we cannot lie. No, Cano, he was not in the army with him. Marcus is like a, is a kid kid, man. I mean, I'm not, he's not a kid kid, but he's way younger. He's way, way younger. <laughs> Marcus says, if you mean the army of YouTube, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, man, but it's just like, you know, um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, man. Like, like I do this show. Just to do the show, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and whatever happens, happens. You know, I'm still at my six seventy five. Well, <laughs> like I've been forever, dude. I'm yeah. I'm still at seven hundred, hovering at seven hundred for the last yeah. four months. Like I've been forever. You know 
I don't care if it goes up or goes down. It's just a freaking number. Who and, cares? Well, with these new rules, man, on YouTube, it, it might not even matter. See, I, I don't, I don't get what. What are we supposed to do? We're we supposed to make sure that all our stuff is is not kid friendly anymore to protect our butt. You know, I, I don't know, man. Because I've I've got most of my stuff is pretty much kid friendly, but I do have certain guys that came on my show and their mouth was horrible. Right. I was wondering if this was ever going to be a conversation that anyone was going to have outside of outside sources. Well, well, you know, we don't know. We, we try to keep a really clean show, me and ERTs, but we can't control some of the people that come on our program and, you know, potty yeah. mouth and stuff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maranya says, all that righteous booty and bobs from the skunk girl triggered ass Dan and he couldn't handle her. Yeah, those, those well, things it's a, kind of, it's a kind of weak. It's just a music stand. That's all it is. So it's pretty weak. <laughs> I should have something more sturdy under me. <laughs> yeah. But that's how we do, you know. But honestly, you know, it, it is what it is. I don't know what they, they want us to do. Uh, you know, and, and I just kind of not caring anymore, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. like come on. It's like this this I mean, I've always said this how many times? YouTube is playtime. Do you think yeah. in the real world? You know, yeah. I've got so much stuff that I can do that I'm, when I'm not on here, it's like this is not my life. I don't, I mean, it's cool to hang yeah. out, but come on. Yeah, I all my streaming I do anymore is either on Twitch or DLive. Cool. Yeah. Telling you. How are you doing this fine day, Shinobi? I'm doing all right. Yeah, That's cool. And me and E's been talking for what the last almost 50 minutes. 47 minutes is eight seconds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> <eight> seconds. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got the counter on the on the um on right. the uh, street oh, yeah. page. There's a counter. It's like live. Mm -hmm. 47 minutes, 22 seconds. You know, live for 47 minutes, 25 seconds, 26, 27, 28, 29. <laughs> Yeah, had to help a friend with a crisis. Yeah, crises are inevitable sometimes. Yeah, we don't we don't do enough crisis on our channels. E. We need to start doing some crisis. No, man, I, I like <laughs> I like my life simple, man. I know. I like my dull, boring life. Yeah, I like my life simple, bro. I don't I don't want to bring all that boom boom. If I yeah. wanted to do that, I'd do commentary on on things that make me mad. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you know, like the Hodge twins or the amazing Lucas or people like that. I don't want to bring that kind of light. I don't want to bring that kind of uh, negative, you know, that that ramifications that go with actually putting, you know, opinions like that out there. Because I ain't got time to read all these damn comments. Amazing Lucas is funny as hell. Understandable. But he got some points, you know. He's got good points. Yeah, he's well. When that that Epstein stuff was going on. I mean, just the way his facial features was before he even gave any commentary, looking around, making sure nobody was watching him as he's saying this. It was right, hilarious. right. <laughs> it was hilarious when he played for the Clintons not to not to uh, go after him. Uh huh. It was yeah it was funny, yeah. bro. <laughs> you got to redo the house cost. Bad. Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's any uh, comments saying. Epstein didn't kill himself. I'm tired yeah. of those memes. Jesus. Epstein's alive. Will people will people leave that thing? What are people gonna give that dog on meme a rest? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm tired of that. Yeah. Even I'm like, okay, so what? He did it, it's too late now. Whether he did or didn't, whether he, he it, it's a done deal now. What can you do about that? Yeah. It's just a, it's just a meme. It's just a joke now. It's all it really is. Yeah, see, but if I wanted to do that, yeah, I definitely. I got plenty of opinions about a whole bunch of bull crap <laughs> that goes on. But yeah. I digress. I'm like, nope. That's when I set out to do this. I just wanted to have fun. Yeah. I yeah. I just what 
yeah, I just wanted to draw some things, and maybe sometimes it'll be fan service, and other times it won't be. Now I gotta, now I have to make sure all my content is set to not to not available for kids because. So, so what happens if you do have kid friendly stuff and you put it to adults only? I'm still kind of looking into that. A, a concern I have is like even if you don't, uh, even if even if you say it's not for, it's not for a, it's not child friendly. What does the FCC look for? Yeah, yeah. It talk, I mean, mind you, it talks about uh, child celebrities and uh, stuff like that. But from what I understand, that's just stuff that you consider to consider when you're. Uh, Figuring out your rating. I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to send all my stuff to adult, and then I've got to go back in there and all the speed drawings. I can set that to kids. Yeah. Yeah. And my animations. Well, see, I don't even know if I can put the skunk girl to kid friendly because she squashes a skunk, a, a squirrel. Mm-hmm. And it shows women's body parts. Oh my God. You know what, Manny? You, you, you're a pervert. Oh, yeah. I am. You're a dirty old man. You're yeah. a pervert, Manny. I mean, it, it is what it is. I'm sorry. And you guys hang out with me. So, what did that make you guys? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I never said that was a bad thing. <laughs> you know, well, you know, I don't know, man. I just enjoy I uh, good art. I draw a lot of feet. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. I just like good art. That's it. I'm sorry. Uh, well, you got I did. You do and lot. under and under boobs. And under boob. <laughs> uh, yeah. Celtic Moon says she got to spend forty five thousand dollars to remodel her house. Jeez. Well, it's forty two forty two thousand dollar fine if you mislabel your your videos. Right. Damn, I got to get hot on that. <laughs> And that's per video, from what I understand. So if yeah. you, so if you've uh, lab so if you've labeled a bunch of stuff inappropriate, that adds up. Yep. I guess, I guess I might cut my YouTube career short. <laughs> oh, well, it's just gotta put everything to adult only. See? Yeah. Yeah. I might have to do that. It's like sorry, FPC. Uh, just because I just because my content doesn't have swearing or gratuitous uh, other things on it, doesn't mean it's for intended for a child audience. I mean, I'm not kind of mad at them for that though, man. A lot of people were using YouTube to kind of lure, you know, to target kids. Yeah, but at the same time, this could lead to an abuse of power here. It's, got, it's been an abuse of power by YouTube. When, what do you mean it could lead? Well, <laughs> yeah. more, more so than it has already. No, nah, that that's there is no more so. There is just them just continuing to look for ways to monetize on your creation. That's all that is. That is just YouTube continuing to monetize on you and you not be able to cash in on your stuff. Yeah. That's it. Nothing else to it. This is why we have paid. This is why we have things like Patreons, people. <laughs> Let's see. So what? <laughs> they were all XX rating, regardless. I don't know. You know, I gotta, I gotta read some more into it. All I know is that, you know, it's it's getting ridiculous now. But it is what it is. You know, we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Oh, you know. I might just move over completely to D Live and call it a day till they till D Live starts doing the same thing. There you go. It doesn't matter to me. I just like to chill, stream, talk trash, yeah, friendly you, trash. You don't Good talk trash. that much trash though. No, I don't because I don't. I don't try to talk trash that's offensive or mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, be a butthole to people. I just like having lighthearted fun, you know? Yep. I think they will give you a warning before they start making you pay. I hope so. You know, because you don't know, you don't really know what it's going to be till they actually start coming down on you. Well, you know what? You know what's the funny part is, though? What about the people 
that are pretty much done with YouTube and they don't even know. They don't care. You yeah. know what I mean? They, yeah, they put a, up yeah. their videos like three, four years ago. They went away. Are they still going to be, are they going to hit those people? That's Come what I'm wondering. That, that's, Probably. that's not right. Well, that's, that's not right though. When you think about it, it's like they don't even have anything to do with YouTube anymore. They're not uploading anything. They have no clue about these new rules. So this is but they have but they have all their content up. Yeah, the yeah, content is still the content. there. So and, they and, gotta deactivate all that. Yeah, so how, how are you I mean they're gonna have to put out a notice and say or if you're not, you're gonna have to say that you're still uploading things, you know, because if people are not uploading and be, what if the person died? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a, yeah, what that's if the happened. person died and he still has his content up there and all of a sudden his family is going to be hit with these fines. Come on, no, no, Skippy. You know, no. Mm-hmm. I think I think in that case, all they have to do is prove that he's dead, and, or she, he or she is dead, and they can just YouTube would just go ahead and. Yeah, but you see, that's that's, that's a whole bunch of crap that people got to jump through hoops for. You know this what I mean? It's true. You know, it's, nope. it's so freaking unnecessary. Well, yeah. It is what it is. Uh, Echo I says it's a scary thing. I guess and they're listening to us to from Twitch. Wow, we got one person listening from Twitch. Amazing. Thank you for yeah, joining yeah. us, Echo. Hey. <laughs> but yeah, you know, or you can do what I do. I just stream everywhere and then just remove everything from YouTube and leave it. <laughs> 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 I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I've cool. always kept my stuff pretty rated PG thirteen at least, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Well, pretty much my content. Yeah, we yeah, no, all, I, all of us here are pretty much PG thirteen, but we just get those certain people that come on that just right. Oh my lord, you that know? that uh, kind of slip up, you know. Mm-hmm. They bring a little extra umph to it. They, mm-hmm. they bring a little sauciness, a little spiciness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, some curry, you know. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, nah, but. What what can you do, man? You know, I mean, if you think about it, most of the YouTube videos, uh, like the old school ones, got like every other word is a curse word. Yes, they do. Especially if you're, especially if you were part of a certain site that will remain nameless. You know, so what do you, you know, it is what it is on that. So whatever. But anyway, like I said, I'll 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 just go back and rechange my settings. Uh, I have to check my settings. Now I didn't should probably put a disclaimer all, in your all the videos. Probably, can you do all the videos at one time, or you're gonna have to go one by one by one I, by one? You by can one do one all one, one time. You can you can make your channel kid friendly or adults only, and then after you do that, you can go in and pick out which videos you want to turn to kids only. Right. So you can do that. Okay, because that sounds like a lot easier. Yeah. So you just go in there, you go into your settings, you just pick. They're going to give you three categories to pick, and then you just pick what you want. Yeah. I was wondering how going to work out. Yeah, they've sent out many emails. So I've I've looked into it. I just, I've been thinking, what am I going to do? So I'm like, I've I've come to the conclusion, I'm just going to put everything adult and go pick and choose the stuff that I know for sure they can't hit me for. Come on, they can't hit me for skunk girl dancing peanuts. Come on. Unless they have something against Christmas. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, people have been saying YouTube is dying for years now, but honestly, with these new rules, I feel like it may actually start dying. Yeah. Fear was this Friday. It's censorship. Yeah. Like that's what's going to kill it. Yep. I mean, it was the Wild West, and that was the cool part about it. Now it's now it's yeah. going to be. It ain't the yeah. Wild West anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's, unless. It's, I mean, yeah, it's got certain content which they are going to push, but if you're from another mindset, they're not going to push. Right. Yeah. It's everything we've hated about the uh, great television service. No, no, it, no, it's not even that. It's like, uh, it's like Manny was saying, if if you have a certain ideology, political or otherwise, that is not mainstream or you know conducive to uh, what Hollywood is pushing. Mm-hmm. If you're not part of the alphabet community, and then your your stuff gets thrown under the bus as far as algorithm wise, you know, like oh, we don't care about your stuff. You can you could be talking about the same subject somebody else is talking about, but if if you're if you a channel that's been known to be 
uh, less progressive. <laughs> you know, that, that's you, a nice way of saying it. <laughs> right. Is that is that a good way of saying it? Uh huh. That's the like correct that. way of saying it. Yeah, it, it, you know, you're gonna get buried, man. Every single time I watch any channel that is not part of the alphabet soup, <laughs> right? And all they, all I hear is, please, you know, share us out because YouTube is burying us under the algorithms. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so it is what it is, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, with me, it's my channel is way too little. <laughs> with them, it's. It doesn't politics. matter if you're a little channel. They want to take out all the little voices. Yeah. They don't care. Let's see. What kind of rules does Twitch like? I don't know. You know, I, I heard Twitch was a little bit more strict. But then I don't know, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, I honestly don't know what to tell you on that side. Was it, wasn't Twitch the one that had all these women just sitting around talking to thirsty <laughs> boys? Uh, yeah. Or was that D-Live? No, that's Twitch. D-Live is a little bit different. And I don't know what they're going. I don't know what D-Live has completely going on yet, to be honest with you. But I've been, you know, I've been keeping an eye on it. Right. And also, we'll see what happens. Eventually, you know, it's, it is going to be, it is going to be what it is. I, I mean, and that's, that's just history though, right? Roman Empire took over everything, then it crumbled. YouTube took over everything, it and crumbled. Well, you know the, whole, what the whole thing is YouTube will not be the number one thing. Years from now, right. something no. else is going to take over. We just got to figure out what that is. Yeah, it happened to MySpace. It's happening with Facebook. It mm -hmm. happened with TV. And... Yeah. But the streaming services are getting just as expensive as cable now, which is crazy. It's getting, out of, it's getting ridiculous. It's kind of why I've held off on subscribing to a uh, streaming service because I don't. I'm trying to weigh out my options. Mm, I, I'm pretty much only got Netflix. That's yeah. it. It's like it's like uh, there uh, there isn't real, a whole, really a whole lot of cult, there isn't really anything I have of anything of interest that has popped up on Netflix right now. Yeah. That is very true. Let's see. Echo says, all good things come to an end. Yes, uh, this is true. Yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, the thing, the thing is, it's like everybody says, you know, well, eventually we're just going to have to find, and, and that's what I've been saying for a while now. Eventually we're just going to have to find a better home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and I've been saying that forever. Why do you think I'm multi stream now? Yeah. You know, just a multi stream because. Depending on where I'm getting the mo, you know, I'm I'm trying to find a better home. So, you can't. I don't want to lose my YouTube community, right? But I also want to build communities in other platforms. Yeah. Because then, if those communities to end up hit, end up toast, you have a you still have a place. Yeah, my wife came in on the rampage. Hold on, people. Well, <clears throat> Shinobi, how you doing today? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> what you working on? Uh, nothing in particular. Just drawing random stuff. What's that character? Probably Skunk Girl. Skunk Girl? You've been drawing a lot of her recently, which is cool as hell. I think you draw more Skunk Girl than me right now. <laughs> I mean, besides this, I mean, I've been drawing the commissions trying to get the commissions done but yeah I'm just trying just try to keep the character fresh cool and, my, and just try to keep the character fresh in my memory banks but yeah lately i've been drawing a lot more other characters than my own which is good i mean sometimes you got to take a break
Like this is pretty cool drawing this bordering canier. Well, Jim Jimmy's character. Oh. This is this is the commission that he's getting for the tier that he backed. <laughs> what? Who got what? Who got what? Pay where? Why? No, I'm talking about the commission that I'm doing for you right now. Oh yeah, man, that's that's a nice one. Oh, hold on, man. Shoot. Uh, solo layout. <laughs> what up, Rebel Comics, Niobe? We are Danny. here with Danny in the Dingo Hour. Not it, yet. It's not the <laughs> Dingo Hour. I have not fulfilled Skunk Girl yet. <laughs> oh, you guys get to see my nice legs. Cool. Hey, I saw Rizy got his Skunk Girl though. <laughs> yeah, he. The reason why Rizy got it fast because his was expensive as hell to ship away. Yeah, how much was it for you to give the folks an idea what it cost to send to Australia? Brother? Okay, to send to Risey because Risey had Risey only had three books. It cost thirty five dollars to send it to Risey. Whoa, and that's like yeah. yeah. Everybody else, all the rest of the people, was the twenty five dollars that I charged everyone. Mm -hmm. It all went to shipping. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> It's crazy how much it costs to ship away. I mean, uh, it, it's just crazy. It's like, wow. It's a job, isn't it? I mean, because you got to sit there, right? You got to make all the packages. You got to fold mm -hmm. all the Jedi mailers. You got to you got address them all, right? Then you got to take puppies down to the post office, you know? Tell me about it. I stood two days in a row, seven hours on the table packing stuff. <laughs> yeah. And that was just the first batch. Right. I've been working on the second batch slowly. I said, I'm not going to do this again. I'm going to do a few boxes today, a few boxes tomorrow. So I did a whole bunch of boxes yesterday. I got a package of all the sculptures tomorrow. It's crazy. It takes a while to get all this stuff ready to go. It's, we it's were watching you guys in, in the off air, and I'm like, we should go raid Manny and ERTs. You know, hey. y'all you know, guys are always welcome to come over yeah. here. <laughs> you know, come on, you really raid us and give us. I just got here myself, Rebel. There you go. We don't mind, you know, as long as there's no more than six people because I'm on StreamYard. <laughs> so, that, anything, anything more than six, yeah, you know, hey, it, it is what it is on that one. Yeah. So what's going on today, guys? What's up, gents? Oh, we're just talking about YouTube expanding, uh, D Live, Twitch. Uh, watching Manny draw my my uh, my commission for my tier, uh, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So that yeah. that's how I get to be white box if I draw the Burning Canier. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that, I knew you were gonna white box me eventually. It's gonna click in his mind. It's like, oh, that's my character. Better white you know, box. <laughs> you know, the wife the wife came in on a rampage. I had to step away for a quick second. Uh, you know, and and deal with that. I can't do it like you, Manny. I just can't have it, you know, broadcast it. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I'm not as good as you with that, you know. But yeah. yeah, I, don't yeah, wanna, yeah. I don't wanna broadcast that either. It just <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> it just happens and you guys eat it up. <laughs> <laughs> I do, man. I, I really, I really like it. Ricey said he is he is in high maintenance, but he is worth more than 35 bucks. Says the bank man. So I, we have people come in, man. It looks like Bankman came in. Trusty's in the house saying he wants to, he would love to join us, but his creativity tank is dry. Um, uh, Echo says, go ahead. Well, definitely, if Risey comes on here, this is not for kids. <laughs> I know, right? Especially, <laughs> especially if we start talking about Cyclops. Oh, yeah. He gets, he gets really, 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 Trigger. really, really triggered Trigger. on Cyclops. Rice says, oh, I didn't I'm say that. Not, mate. Yeah, Rice is in the house saying, I did not say that. The yeah, Australian door. Rice is leaving the Australian door. $35 American to send the Rice is $50 Canadian. Jeez. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's about 100 pesos Mexicano. Yeah, I wonder how many ringgits it is from your. <laughs> You know, Dude, it's, it's, like, it's it's funny. It's seriously every place that I sent foreign was twenty four dollars or twenty four fifty. Yeah, yep. it was crazy. And then of course I put it in, I put it in uh, the Gemini's, and then I gotta buy the tape, and I gotta buy the the labels, and I gotta do the work. So 
25 bucks. Yeah. It didn't, it really doesn't cover it, but it is what it is, you know, whatever. Yeah. Dude, you know, this, like, this, this is your, your, this is your, uh, cornerstone, you know, what do you, what oh, do you yeah. call it? The keystone. This is your keystone right. to, to the rest of the, everything that's going to happen, man. This mm -hmm. is like a, a big learning experience. Yeah. This is getting your name out there. I, I, think, you. I think Larry was in the DM group when my wife was telling me, oh, why don't you send it this way? Why don't you send it that way? And I'm arguing with my wife like, no, I need Gemini's. Remember that, Larry? Oh, I remember. She was, was, she was on you, man. She was on you. And, and like, I was like, no, I'm not going to send it. Only I'm only going to send it with Gemini's. There's no way I'm going to send it in a, in a mailer. It's and I was like, I was rooting for you, man. I'm like, yeah, stick to your guns, Manny. Stick to your guns. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the funny thing is that Manny doesn't realize it, but most of the time we do stick by Manny's side because he does make sense. But they're quiet uh, as hell. <laughs> no, no, no. With that jalapeno cheesecake incident, I was not quiet. <laughs> the jalapeno cake incident, I was not quiet. I was on your side. But on the other ones, I was like, I, I got to. You gotta pick and choose your battles with Skunky, man. Right. That, that's all it is on that, you know. She's out there. Hopefully she's not out there. She's out there somewhere <laughs> listening. Oh, all right. Yeah. One time, man, Manny put out the rice and beans with the missus. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh Lord. There has to be an easy way of doing it. Maybe different prints and service to send it out. I don't know. Just out of the box. Yeah, I mean. There's there's ways of, of doing it, but when you're a small operation, you know, with a small run like Manny's doing, it's just it's it's think the fact of the matter is it's just better to do it all yourself. Well, and the whole thing is some of the guys out there, they really don't I mean, the way I packed it, you you saw Risey opening it up. I mean, I made sure I taped everything yeah. down and things were not gonna shift and people were gonna get their books, you know pretty much undamaged yeah they might, they might gemini mailers are, those gemini mailers are pretty awesome yeah but still you you put them in a gemini mailer what i did was i put in a gemini mailer i did the same thing as larry did larry taped his comics down too he didn't yeah. just shove them in there you gotta tape them down most of the comics i've got i didn't shove them in the mailer and sh shove it off and that's it that's yeah. not cool I like, I like what larry did though he, he gave me extra comics with my order Cool. Yeah, he sent oh, me some I got a box of like comics that I got like a bunch of doubles of and stuff like that. So you know, um, if I know who you are, I'll, I'll throw in something. Now, now Manny didn't get the metal print. Now I understand. <laughs> but uh, you know that that went to Risey because he was back and all the way from uh, Australia, man. You know, and if I was gonna pay, because it cost me twenty five bucks to actually send the Risey. This was by boat, you know, and I'm like, ooh. Mm -hmm. And you know that's expensive. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them something for paying all that money, you know. Like, yeah. Because I told Rise, I said you can back the book, man. But I said shipping ain't gonna be cheap, brother. And he's like, oh mate, I don't care. All right. Yeah, Rice is a good guy, man. Like he he backs a lot of books. Speaking of backing a lot of books, man. Yeah. I have backed quite a few. Uh, saw I saw a tweet from Bean from PA. Mm -hmm. Bro, yeah. they're riding her hard. Bro, mm -hmm. the amount of books that lady has backed is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, she closed her wallet, so she did not, you know, she didn't back some other books that were really good, you know, but yeah. she closed yeah. her wallet up a while back. Well, you know, you can't treat people bad. You can't yeah. treat customers bad. Yeah, you can't. And not ex and expect them to stay loyal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't treat customers bad, brother. That that the whole mission statement from the beginning was this is a customer driven movement, and then they spat on the customer's face. Like that's like committing suicide. <laughs> like, yep. why would you do that? Mm. You know, but anyway, I was just looking at that and I was like, wow, she backed a lot of books. A lot of books. Yeah. Like the amount of grief she's received for all the support she had given is mm -hmm. not is not is not it's not commiserate. It's not fair. Yeah. Not fair at all. That's that was boom boom. Well, you know, she has the option now not to to back those people in those books, and that's their loss, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Because well, it's not that. It's like, you know, not only is not only those are people in those books, but you know, is is the sourness uh, that you get. 
from anybody that may or may not associate with the movement. That's why I just like to call us independent artists instead yeah. of whatever. Because like now, now started. you start putting labels and people that have been soured by said labels, you know, they're not going to be like, I'm not interested. Well, you know, right on my Twitter profile it says no labels, no groups, no, you know what I mean? No association sort of thing. And uh, yeah. stick by that. You know, I mean, I'm going to say the name of the elephant in the room, Comicsgate, right? I'm right. not. I'm not comic skate. You know, I am, I'm Larry. I'm, I'm an independent guy. I run my own show. Kind of like Brian Polito from Lady Death. You know, he does his own thing, his own way. Um, but that's me. I actually got my Lady Death Kickstarter in the mail today. Speaking of backing things, that was pretty cool. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. And that's what I, that, and that's what I'm saying. You know, I, I just read to say that I'm, uh, you know, we're indie, you know, indie creators and anything else. I just don't want to, I just don't want, people to be soured on something that I didn't have anything to do with. Right. You know, because the thing is, the thing is, you know, you just want to, you just want to treat people that way you want to be treated. Right. You just want to, yeah. you want to have that kind of, um, that kind of um, synergy for lack of a better word, where, you know, where people are treated with some kind of decency. Yep. Well, my whole thing is and I've been, I've been at this uh, selling to customers for years. I mean, I, I sold my first paintings back in 1988. I always gave the customers a little bit extra. You know, that way I wasn't only worrying about that one sale. I wanted that people to come back and buy more the next year and the next year. And I had repeat customers all the time. So anybody who bought my paintings back in 1988. <laughs> Pretty cool. Got my paintings all over the world. Yeah, I've been in this art business a long time. Got to treat them. Got to treat them right. Like it, what's funny is, E, how many books have you you backed, roughly? Bro, I was Bro. looking at it. My my stack is pretty steep too. I say I have. I want to say I have about 75 indie books. Wow. How many of those 75 indie books did you get a thank you note in those damn boxes? Um, okay. So the, um, the Rags um, um, team. No, no. Let me. I'm trying to do the countdown because it, it, I, I can literally count it in my on my hand. Mm -hmm. The Rags team. When I bought when I bought Rags number one, it was only digital at the time. <laughs> they sent me yeah. an email with a thank you. A thank you email. Some bonus stuff, uh, some bonus stuff in the email, and, and um, the guy that did Berserkernot, Berserkernot, yeah, he he was pretty cool. Um, that I think that's it, bro. <laughs> well, well, I think that's can... it. To be honest with you, dude, that's just, I was in, incredulous when I saw that with all the books that I backed also. And I backed a lot of books. There was, I don't think I saw any thank you note in any of those no, no. books. Well, I mean, I here's the thing. It, 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 unless if you're going to handwrite them all, um, yeah, it, you, like if you're going to type them all and just print it out and just sign them, that's one thing. Like Brian Polito will do that, right? But, you know, if you're going to send someone a thank you note and, and be genuine about it, I think it needs to be handwritten. And so if you're going to handwrite all those notes, say like 150 notes or something, you know. No, I mean, just, just a little note that you could have, you know, a little two by four would thank you for supporting this book. Hope to see you in the future and then sign right. it at the bottom. That is a fine, you know, that is exactly what, you know, it's something simple. And, and you, you can print like a 10 of those on one page, cut them up and put them in the books. You know, that's, you know customer satisfaction you know mm -hmm. like like right. for the people that the people that uh back to me they were on the mailing list they actually got individual thank you notes from me and yeah. of course they and they do have the original you know remark on the on the on the little card so you know just little things like that just to you know make sure the people know that you're thank i mean i'm totally thankful for all the backers I mean, don't know how they found the book. You know, I know how the people that watch the show, but all the other people, I don't know how they found the book. So I'm thankful for that. And build, building up a reputation, that's the main thing.
Yeah. Uh, you know, and and uh, Lady Cuthbert says Gary, Gary Shipman always says a second print when I buy something from him. Yeah, Gary's pretty cool about it too. Um, you know, but I think you know, bro. I think I think out of everything that I've backed, uh, I think maybe two, two, like you know that I can kind of think of. You know, and and uh, but you know. I like I like the way the Rags team did it. That's why I always thought of them as a good as a class act, you know, because they were. I mean, as soon as um, I I backed them, I mean, Brian Ball was on it. Sent me an email, you know, saying thank you for backing, telling them about the future endeavors. Blasi 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 blasi. Right. Mm -hmm. Trust me, he's about to go to sleep because I'm putting him to sleep. What? <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, uh, but, but yeah, you know, I mean, that is a nice touch, you know, but mm -hmm. then again, there were books that also listed the backers in the book. Mm -hmm. So if you count those, well, no, because I didn't back those books at high enough tier. So <laughs> I, I wasn't put on those, you know what I mean? Um, Dude, I got a book in the other day and my artwork's in the book. I did not know that my artwork was going to be in the book. There you go, because you're Manny. That's no, awesome. you should be person, old. person could have at least <laughs> asked before they put it in the book. They didn't ask you? I didn't know it was going to be in there. They just said, ah. That's... I mean, technically, I can't say anything. Once you do fan art, you're done. It's, it's, it's there. The person can put it in there. Yeah, or they can. <laughs> Whoa! No, that's wrong. So let's say I go to an artist in Artist Alley and I get them to do a personal piece for me, right? If we do not negotiate my right to reproduce that piece of art, I have absolutely no right to print it. Mm. That's why you pay for printing rights, right? So if I get a piece of art done and I want to be able to use it, there's usually an extra cost involved with artists for them to give you the rights to be able to reproduce it. Mm. I know I'm down that road. <laughs> At least in Canada, that's how it works. Well, but you know Canadians are backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, what would happen is, you know, people just go to Artist Alley, hit up all these artists, like, you know, big name artists, throw them in their little indie book and say, such and such did art for my book. You know what I mean? And then, you know, say it's like J. Scott Campbell. Say you're lucky enough to meet J. Scott Campbell. He does a little doodle for you. You have absolutely no right to put that in your book without J. Scott Campbell's permission. It's a personal right. piece. You know? Well, what are you going to do about it now, though? You know, I'm not going to do nothing because I know that person didn't make much money off his book anyways. Right. I mean, I, I get I get if you I get I get it. If you're J. Scott Campbell and, you know, you want to you want to get your money out of it. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm not just giving Givens is giving cheeseburgers to trusty. Hmm. <laughs> but it is what it is, you know. Mm hmm But man, he's famous, man. Not famous. You know how many is many what many dishes is known. What book is it that your art's in? Like who's I'm not gonna say. <laughs> I ain't trying to get Manny in trouble. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not I, I, well, by the answer, I already know who it is. You do? I do. Hmm. Now, if you want me to say it. I could, but since you don't want to say it, maybe I shouldn't say it either. Hmm. I think I think that's an excellent idea. All right. We'll just let it, we'll just let it go. All right. <laughs> I think that was that was an excellent idea, Larry. That was that was that was pretty good. That was uh, uh, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. He knows I'm right too. <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> I'm not even going to inquire because that that would lead. <clears throat> Slip it to the tongue, right? right. <laughs> you know, I start pressing the issue. <clears throat> I I could say something right now that ERTs would know exactly who. Well, look, I'm just saying, you know, this person <laughs> might be ordering 500 copies of their book. I don't know. <laughs> nah, no, we're not gonna do it. We're not gonna do it. <laughs> I pride myself. <sighs> Trusty side crashing out for the night. Good night. Yeah, he's, he's already gone. Right. He's like, he said he's tired. He said, you guys are too boring tonight. I know, because we don't have Trusty on, you know. Well, you guys yeah. want to see some books? 
honestly, books. Books. No, man, I'm watching. I'm watching. Man, he draw my commission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just coming out very nicely. Why, why do I want to see books? Lady yeah. Duff came in today. That's a nice cover. Now, the cool thing about this is it came with a bonus book. And so this is like the Lady Death lingerie issue. <laughs> now, this might be too hot for ERT's TV. I don't know, man. I don't know. That, 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 girl, needs, uh, it, that girl needs a butt implant. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're talking like fantastic art all through this book. Like this one here by Jamie Kindle. That's nice. And so some of it's a little spicy, so I won't show it all. But uh, that came in the mail today and a bunch of little things. Some other little recent books I picked up, mainly for the covers here. But um, Art Germ, Amazing Mary Jane, number one. Nice. Art is pretty decent inside this book. Art Germ, Magic, New Mutants. Now, the story, not so much, but God love when magic's on the cover. <laughs> Jamie Tindall, White Widow, number three. This was a crowdsource book. Uh, but yeah, that was a crowd. Yep, yeah, I remember that. There's a beautiful sort of chrome cover of that. We talked about J. Scott Campbell earlier. Black Cat, number six, J. Scott Campbell cover. Very nice. And then you guys brought up rags and stuff. So this is nice. Nice. I think I have that issue. Now, I'm missing a couple here. I think I'm missing like uh, two and maybe a bit. There's some punch line. Yep. I got to get back on that punch line train, man. I, I love that uh, trade paper. Like and I got some rags. Now, there's some in the box behind me, but these are the couple that I had out. Yeah. See, my shop doesn't don't get all of them, so... I have to. I'm probably gonna go back and buy the digitals. Now the cover, the cover that I like is. Uh, I like the cover that I'm. Yeah. Um, for this. For this. For this you. yeah, my shop doesn't get all the uh, um, NRA press stuff either. Yeah, but um, Firefly issue eleven, and they, the cover was Inara, and that was a nice cover. Very nice cover. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. That came in this week. Man, the man who set the internet on fire is in the chat. Pablo Mr. Romero? Right. His Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel redesign was oh. a hot thing for like a good solid five days. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. My name is Pablo yeah, so Romero. Romero. The man who could trigger uh, Twitter better than I ever could. He was covered by the quarterly. He was in the article by Yo, Bounty Ripa. Comics. Uh, Young Ripper covered him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not only Young Ripper, but what was this other? Somebody else covered him. Um, he was on two YouTube channels. Yeah. He was on. Uh, he was on somebody's uh, website. I mean, Paolo was everywhere, man. Oh yeah. yeah. My name is Paolo Romero. Uh, you can find me on everybody's YouTube at everybody's uh, website. I just uh, I just draw uh, Miss Marvel. I don't know what happened. I thought it was you know just a pretty just, yeah. a pretty modest drawing of Miss Marvel, and everybody lost their freaking mind. I just gave a big tit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there Every, we go. everybody lost their freaking mind. Oh, uh, they ever? Did you read the comments? Um, uh, I. It was so many. It was so many. It's like over 2,000 people commenting and all the retweets and all the likes. Oh, I know. God. It's insane. It, it was ridiculous is what it was. But I learned something that I didn't know. I didn't know what the whole where are her organs thing was about. I was like, why are these people asking about organs on a drawing? <laughs> and, <laughs> and then someone explained it to me. I was like, "This is still stupid, but okay." Well, the first time I saw that reference was when J. Scott Campbell was hot under fire, and everyone was saying that the girls were too skinny and that they wouldn't don't have room for their organs. <laughs> okay, people, people, people don't realize it's a drawing, right? Yeah, it's a freaking drawing. 
it's well, what, what right? was interesting was in one of the comments in the J. Scott Campbell thing, there was this girl, she was a Mary Jane cosplayer, right? And she was one of the ones that was really hurt at him, you know, about body image and stuff. And he flat out asked her, he said, well, what would you like to see? And she said, well, I'm a Mary Jane cosplayer, so I want to see Mary Jane look more like me. <laughs> that was her answer. She's Okay, so what does she look like? Uh, she certainly wasn't Mary Jane. You know, I mean, she was an all right looking girl, but, you know, maybe, you know, uh, not not the same size as Mary Jane. And mm. so, you know, then the, you know, the response was, well, <laughs> it's not the artist's job to make the character look like the cosplayers. <laughs> you no. know what I mean? Like, yeah, the cosplayers are supposed to look <laughs> as close to the character as they possibly can. Right. Do. So her logic was completely ass backwards, you know. Yeah, but that's the thing is, right? It's a 2D drawing, right? It's a 2D rendering. And uh, I mean, it's funny because because I think uh, Young Ripper was saying, hey, man, they're not complaining about, you know, impossible, uh, like a guy oh, on a comic book, like Superman having a 16 pack. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all know that's not realistic for, for a man, for most men. You know what I'm saying? But you don't hear men sitting around crying about it. They're like, all right. Yeah. Cool. You and know what I'm saying? He's got 18 packs. Great. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. Let's talk about the story. Like, who yeah. cares? You know, why why are y'all complaining? I mean, I, I just didn't get it. Like that whole where are her organs thing. I was like, what what is that? Like, uh, they're not anywhere. It's a 2D character. Yeah. I'm a drawing. <laughs> I don't have organs, you moron. You know, it's a 2D character. Like, what? They're, well, they're, they're fictional oh, characters. I mean, this is what's crippling the industry, though, is all this sort of um, censorship, right? And, sure. you know, I noticed it starting to happen in 2013 and 14 with Milo Manera and the band Spider Woman cover that there was going to be this trend now where they're going to try and take sexy out of comics, you know? And for the most part, they've succeeded. Now, granted, always some exceptions, you know. Um, oh, yeah, the new Squirrel Girl is really sexy. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> Marvel's J. Scott Campbell do black cat cover, so that's a good sign, <laughs> you know. Um, but then you have things like White Widow on the Indies. You know, you have things from Big Dog Inc. You have the Lady Deaths, of course. And then you have your, your Niobes and Skunk Girls and everything else. Um, so, you know, sexy's still out there. But, you know, in the big two, they don't do covers like the way that they used to anymore, right? So, no, they're that, all boring. Right. Yeah. You know, you take a hard look at the covers from the 90s, you know, when Jim Lee, you know, and, and the image founders basically were, were doing the hot looking ladies and stuff. And when mm. Jay Scott Campbell first got his start, say in the early 2000s with Danger Girl and Gen 13 and things like that, right. um, some hot looking stuff, you know, Witchblade, Evangeline, Glory, Child, you know, um, you know, sort of like, uh, you remember the bad girl comics of the 90s, you know, like, <laughs> mm. yeah, Evangeline and all of them. Yeah, yeah, you don't see any of that sort of stuff anymore on the shelf, you know. And if you do, it's very rare. Yeah. Yeah. You can have female characters, but we have, but they have to look as much like us as we possibly can because I don't want because uh, I need to be represented, no matter how pathetic I am. Pablo sure. says they also did a lot of redesign of female characters. They made them more heavy set and more covered with smaller breasts. Yeah. yeah. Marania says Henry Henry Cavill got close to the 18 pack ideal for Superman. That that was a muscle suit. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean he's in shape. He was in shape, but yeah. but but the, that was a muscle suit. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I think you know this whole thing against like you know uh, the, the pretty sexy sort of imagery is more of a jealousy issue than it is yeah. you know or, or you know trying to be realistic right it, it's like these girls who know that they're never going to be that image you know they they're the ones that are complaining because they're the ones that they think buy the product right and they want the product to relate to them um but more entitled uh more privileged and and they don't put the work in to themselves you know mm -hmm. like 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 people used to like hey you know um if if you don't you know like like if you want to be a healthier life, then you got to put in the work. You got to go to the gym. You got to eat right. That's about blah, you know what I'm saying. Exactly. But, but now these people are so entitled. They're like, no, you have to put expect. on the big mask. Well, yeah. it has no way or no way. And my rule of thumb was is that like pizza. 
<laughs> you know, my rule of thumb is um, nothing needs to be that absolute. You know, there's room on the shelf for everything. So if someone wants to make uh, their book and, and have, you know, what they would deem more realistic female uh, depictions, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Just, yep. My books sit on the shelf too, though, right? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Let the yeah, no, no. yeah. Let, let, let capitalism do its thing. Exactly. Let people choose what they want to choose. I'd want to see Skunker with Thunder Ties. I would love to see him Skunk Girl, man. Not with Thunder Ties, though. <laughs> no. She's a pretty thick woman, right? right. Nice, nice little curvature here, and I, not I, huge. But still, you look at this. This is not a teenage boy. Now, if Pablo Romero drew that, how bigger would the breasts be? <laughs> oh, three dude. times. Yeah, three three times. times. Maybe like out there. <laughs> It'll be about two to three times larger. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No, but no, and that's what it really is. Is is these people? Um, they don't. They don't want to put the effort into they don't themselves, put the right? In. They don't want to put the effort into themselves. So what they want to do is they want everybody else to lower their standards and not put the effort into themselves either. And yeah. and that and that's not right. You know what I'm saying? If if you yeah. feel like you don't want to put the effort into yourself, fine. Live your life the way you want to live. But if uh, if somebody else wants to put that effort into themselves, if that's yeah. if that's something that's part of them, part of their core, part of what they want to do, don't get mad at them either. Yeah, but that's if, kind of the thing. Don't get mad at someone else's success. But at the same token, people have to realize comic books were usually were really made for little for guys. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And guys are visual creatures. Yeah. You know, we our yeah. vision is part of, of everything. You know what I'm saying? That's how we how we intake what beauty is and, and whatnot. You know, we, we don't pick the brains first. We see the aesthetic first. Like, oh, this well, let me ask you this. You know, you're watching a movie, you're watching television, you know, you're watching primetime TV. Generally, the people in these shows, unless the character really demands that they're not, are good looking people, right? Exactly. Well, here, it's funny that you say that, but I'm going to let you finish your point and then I'm going to bring up well, another it, point. It's just, we like to watch good looking people in, in our in our stories. You know, we we, we like the eye candy. We, we, we like the fantasy. And, you know, unless the character depicts it be something different, you don't see average people playing no. these parts when you go to the movies no you're, you're, you're seeing the exceptional uh you know the people with the exceptional looks or or the yeah. talent right yeah right. that's why they got schwarzenegger to play conan the barbarian so right. it says thunder thighs no but and, and that's another valid point but flip that on the other side um what was the name um there was a tv there was a netflix show that was a tv show and it was about three roommates, a werewolf, a vampire, and a ghost. I, I can't remember. I remember. The name I, that was a great show, man. Um, mm. God, I love that show. Okay. So you know what I'm talking about, right? I, yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of it too, dude. Um, but it was good. It was good. All right. So, so here's the thing, and here's what I find interesting. The British one, right? Yeah. The characters look plain and ordinary. Okay, I got I to gotta look that name up, dude. Right. <laughs> But then the American version, you had like this, chill, you know, beautiful woman, you know, dudes with muscles. Uh, I am human, says Lady Celtic Moon. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah. <coughs> the American version, you know, the guys were chiseled up, you know, cut up, ripped up, whatever you want to call it. Here in Canada. And uh, and then on the British show, they just look like ordinary people, like, you know, like people you would see on the street. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also culture, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, to Larry's point, even though it was the same show, I prefer to watch the American version on Netflix than the British version. You know, right. and and I don't know. That's that's like a that's like a uh, that was like that's like an interesting thing. Like if if it's the same show with the same lines. With uh, with a different set of people, you know, all skilled actors. Which one would you watch? Would you watch like like would you be like me and watch the Americanized version where everybody's in shape, you know, cut up, uh, you know, ripped up, and or would you watch the British version when you got a dude that's almost anorexic? You know what I'm saying? And and not like he would not look like this stereotypical lycanthrope. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm -hmm. 
when you see when you think about werewolves, you think about these muscular people, you know, that that turn into wolves, right? Because the muscle mass and the transition and everything like that just doesn't allow you to be less than right. that. So so Lady Celtic Moon says she saw the American version. But it was it was actually a British TV show before it was Americanized by Netflix. That's true. And I never saw the British version either. I heard about it, but I never mm -hmm. saw it. It was on Netflix as well. They were both on Netflix. Yeah, I didn't watch it on Netflix though. I, I think I watched it like on the Space Channel that we have here in Canada. Ah, uh, it's kind of like our yeah. version of sci-fi. You know what I mean? Like sci-fi yeah. got a lot of a lot of indie comic book movie uh, shows in there, man. I didn't realize it. Yeah, they're not the best acted ones in the world because it's sci-fi. <laughs> well, let me interrupt you for a second. Speaking of sci-fi, I'm on pins and needles, boys. And I don't know if you watched the show or not, but I am waiting for episode three of The Mandalorian. Like as we speak, I'm just waiting for it to drop. Oh, the one that everyone's complaining about because there ain't enough women in it. That's not everybody. It's one person, Anita Sarkeesian. That's yeah. the only person I've heard say no, anything. No, Nobody I'm, else has said anything else about when that. You're trying I to heard a few others about it, but I could be wrong. Well, you know, when you're trying to be relevant, you're going to bitch about the most popular thing on the go right now. And, and that's... <laughs> Here's you know, the thing that you got to realize about Anita. She has been irrelevant for so long and broke because she went spent through that money that she is looking for any cost champion that would allow her to get some money. You know, she is trying to bust back into the gaming industry, into the movie industry. No and one, the industry. one wants her. Not and yet. nobody wants her because she's a cancer, because there's nothing productive about what she's yeah. saying. Well, I mean, even if she had let's say some some legitimacy to some of her views like let's say even she did the problem is is that she's so sort of on the extreme spectrum of it that no one wants to deal with it right like people are starting to really get sick of the politics the politics the politics that that, that are going on and we're starting i don't know if you guys have noticed but i'm starting to see a, a you know it's not overnight don't get me wrong but a slow it's shift in the way that things are being done you know yeah well, if it wasn't just me then no, it, it, it's happening. It's slow, but it's sure. But you know, the thing is, people are getting tired of that get woke, go broke thing. Yeah, people are tired of losing money. People are tired of losing money. This is it. So, when you look at Star Wars as an example, and you got like The Last Jedi, which was supposed to be the big thing and, and, and failed, then you have the rise of Skywalker on the horizon, and then you have like a small half hour streaming TV show that people are more excited about than the movie that's on the horizon next month. That should tell you something when you. Bitch about the Joker being an R-rated movie, and it becomes, you know, this huge blockbuster, the highest greatest R-rated movie of all time. Again, you know that that should tell you something. You know what I mean? Um, and, and there are other examples I'm sure that we can dig up. Uh, as in the shift that I see, I even see it in comic books. You know, um, where they're slowly getting away from agenda pushing, and, and yeah. slowly, and, and it's slow, but it's slowly. Yeah. Yeah, even some of the Marvel books have gotten better. I was about to say the Savage Avengers from Marvel. None of that is on there. None of that bullcrap is on the Savage Avengers from Marvel. I had every single issue so far of the Savage Avengers, and I've enjoyed it. There's no Savage agenda, Avengers. no no push. It's just good old Wolverine, Punisher, Conan, Elektra, uh, <clears throat> going in, uh, uh, Venom going in, tearing stuff up. I can't get mad at that. I cannot get mad at that. Fantastic Four has been good too. So, so things are it's it's gonna it's gonna be a slow pride, but it's a cycle, right? It's a pendulum, like people say. Yeah. It just swings one way. Well, here's the reason. Here's the one other. reason why you won't see it overnight, especially in comic books, right? Is because most of these comic books are written months in advance. So whatever they've got done, like it's done. They already they know what they're doing this next next year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so now they have to switch gears. So whatever they've written now, it, it now has to be slowly adapted back to, you know, back to the storytelling sort of sort of style yeah. as opposed to the agenda pushing sort of style, you yeah. know. But and, and the thing is this, and, and people have to realize politics have always been part of comics. They just never been the forefront of it. They've yeah. always been the backdrop story. You know, the thing that's behind, you know, uh not you know, not so much part of the political agenda, but the political climate is always has always been reflected in comics. They just didn't make it the main story. They just didn't make it the main thing. You know what I'm saying? This is what I've been saying all along. Right. It it was just like whatever was going on, like Captain America, World War II was going on. Guess what was happening in Captain America? World War II. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? It, Vietnam it, it, didn't deal with, so yeah. We just you know, Punisher, so, yeah. Punisher uh, had Vietnam. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's it's what I'm saying is it's always been there, but it's never been the the focus of the story. Yeah. It's, the focus has always been the heroes within that environment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. so I get it when people say, "Well, politics have always been part of books." Yeah, but but not You're doing at it the wrong. forefront. You know, it's well, because and it wasn't so lopsided either, right? It wasn't like you got to follow my politics, and we're going to drive right. it ahead of how it's supposed to be. You right. know, a good, let's say you politics done right in comic books is is, is going to be a book that doesn't push aside either way, but leaves you in the end thinking about what you just read. You know, exactly. And you know, yeah. and, 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 and that's and what the X Men books have been until recently. Yeah, now it gives you the ability to see both sides. You know what I'm saying? Not just one side. You know, it, it, it leaves it open ended for you because that's what I think is missing, man. I'd be like the news, same thing with the news. The news used to be about the news. Now the news is about whatever. The news is no longer the news. It's just a show about someone's opinion. Yeah, it's opinion based. It's all opinion based. Like yeah. whatever happened to reporting the, the truth? Let people are smart. Let them, I mean, maybe yeah. not all people are smart, but you know, let. Let people think. Let them think on their yeah. own. You know. Let them, let them uh, uh, formulate opinions. Yeah. You know. And, and, contrary and, to, and contrary to popular belief, it isn't just. It hasn't been CNN and MSNBC just doing it. It's does everybody do? But the thing is, what I tell people: watch everything. Yeah. And then decipher what the truth is. Don't get stuck in one side. Like, oh, I'm just gonna watch CNN. No, nah, man, watch CNN. Watch Fox. You yeah. know. Watch the blaze on YouTube, you know, uh, get, you know, uh, get all, all the information you can get from every angle because somewhere in between there, there, there is a bit of truth, a nugget of truth that you can base your opinions on. But if you, if you stick on one side, man, you never, you never, you're never going to figure it out. Doggy cam. All right. It's Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> and now, uh, now from the now we're taking a break from the political rant to look at the cute dog. <laughs> Say the Taco oh, Bell. Oh, oh. No, but you know, uh, but no, but Larry, you're right. You know, yes. it, it is what it is on 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 that count. But I, I, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that show, Being Human, because I remember that there was two versions of it, and I remember which version I chose to watch. You know, and <laughs> and it's because. You know, the, the, you know, you you don't, you know, it it, it you want to see it in the best light possible, you know. But I don't know, man. You know, if you ever get a chance to, Larry, and no, I haven't watched the Mandalorian yet. Um, I'm just kind of kind of disappointed that <clears throat> that they didn't oh, do the whole I, season. I, I've like, watched the Mandalorian. I think it's fantastic. No, no. But I'm disappointed about I'm it. I'm not going to spoil anything, but episode two, man, had me like laughing my ass off in a good way. You know what I mean? Like, but are they dropping on on a weekly basis? What are they doing? Like, I, 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 I this is what I liked about Netflix, right? Netflix is Daredevil. You got the whole season, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I could watch it the whole if I wanted to, like something, you know, like hey, me and the wife. Well, like, I mean, was I got like. Uh, I know where you're going, and I got an explanation for you already. <laughs> Go ahead. Go hit, me. hit me with your best shot, brother. I, I want to hear it. Well, I, mean, here's the thing. Uh, I would guess that there's a large percentage of people who subscribe to the Disney Plus service, such as myself, for only one show, okay? The Mandalorian. <laughs> so let's say I subscribe to Disney, and they had a free trial, which they did, and you get, get it for like five days free. So right. they had dumped. The Mandalorian, all in one batch, and I just been watching in one night. What is mm -hmm. now to stop me? Okay, I got my Star Wars fix. Thank you very much, Disney. I, I'm going to unsubscribe now. If they put it out on a weekly basis, and this is a business decision, that you know keeps you at least locked in for two months because the season is eight episodes long. I get it. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. But the only that's thing, what, I, the only thing, I, do it. <laughs> only thing that upsets me about that is that I, I am. Um, if, even though I am not a millennial, you know, I, I kind of like when I when I like a show, I just want to burn through it. Like sure. I want to just, you know, but I just want to boom, 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 boom. All right. I, when when uh, Netflix used to drop like uh, any well, of the Marvel stuff. In that regard, right? Because it used to be you would have to wait and, you know, wait for a show to come on. And not only that, 
you know, we're talking like the time before even uh, DVRs, you know, you had to be like in front of the TV at a certain time, ready to go. And right. miss it. <laughs> you were, you were spooched, you know, that's it. You're Unless right. You right. had a VCR in house and you just programmed a darn thing. Yeah. But not a lot of people have VCRs either. I know, I know, I know. VCRs when they first came out, that, that was expensive technology. Yeah. And, so, and even then you were still only kind of watching once a week. So like if you pre-recorded your show, cause you still had to wait for the whole other week for, for the new one to come out. And so right. Like, Daredevil and the thing of binge watching, you know, is what we call it, right? Uh, really became a thing, and people kind of got spoiled to that. Um, yeah. There's something to be said for it. I mean, it's great. You get your fix in, you know, you, you watch it, you're done, you move on to the next thing. But there's also something to be said about, you know, having your fan base waiting in anticipation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you no, still- no, I get it. Building the suspense and whatnot is, yeah. is amazing. But the thing is, you know, like, um, like you said, uh, there's there's definitely one one thing about being able to burn through a whole season, and then there's another thing saying that give you a week to sit to sit and contemplate about the show and whatnot. But with so much yeah. junk out there, man, you know, how much stuff are you gonna sit there and contemplate about? You know what I mean? But True. I understand what you're saying, though. I, it does make sense as a business move for a brand new streaming service that still doesn't have all its own movies, the rights to all its own movies, because. Like uh, I, I check. I'm checking out the free trial. Like Endgame is on there, but Infinity War is not, right? right. And Infinity that War is not coming sense. in till June 2020, right? Yeah, it's, it's probably still underneath Netflix contract. Right, 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 right. So, so you know, and I'm like, man, you know, I can I have every? I don't. Can I have everything in one? Like, if I want, if if I want it because all the good Marvel stuff is on there, can I be? Can I watch all my good Marvel stuff? I don't want to jump between two streaming services. You know what I'm saying? Which is one thing that upsets me. On the other hand, though, people have been saying that they've been watching the uh, old X Men cartoons and, mm-hmm. and they are they are seeing it with different eyes because, of course, they're not kids anymore. Now they're adults and they're like thinking about you know all the all the statements and everything that was being that were being said and made in those cartoons and they're like wow they realize you know how deep this cartoon really was you know which is good because it gives yeah, you a chance to well to especially revisit. especially if you haven't been reading the comics absolutely yeah. i mean here's the thing you know most of that cartoon was based off all the stuff that chris claremont <laughs> you know and uh chris claremont was the you know premier writer of the x-men you know for a long long time you know you're talking about the guy who brought us the the phoenix saga for Christ's sake you know what i mean um, so that's a testament to the comics at, at that time and, and to Chris Claremont, because most yeah. of those shows were either direct adaptations or loosely based on his stories. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. And for a lot of people, that was their exposure. That cartoon, there was an exposure, it was their exposure to X-Men. Now me, I read, I was reading the comics a whole year before the cartoon had, a. Uh, had air so i had a familiarity with the characters going in yeah no but i just find it interesting though like like i haven't seen them yet i haven't gone to rewatch them yet but i'm wondering if it'll have the same effect you know like wow you know now that i'm much much older you know an adult been, you know live my life been through some things and i watch these cartoons you know yeah. well i see them in a different light as well you know does age change your perspective of, of of what you thought was a fun cartoon when you were just a kid well, some things don't age well, and, and other <laughs> things do. You know, I, I watched yeah. a couple of the old X Men cartoons on the Disney Plus there at work one night, and it you you it definitely feels like it's an older cartoon nowadays, right? Right. Uh, I remember yeah. watching it brand new though. Um. So, you, you, but it still kind of holds up. You know, it's a good comic book cartoon. Uh, I don't know if like new kids, you know, like like you know, young kids today would, would actually go back and enjoy them as much as we did for the nostalgia sort of sake of it. But, right. Yeah. Who knows. Yeah, and I want, and that's the other point, right? If if, if watching it now as a, as an older gentleman, is that now more of a nostalgia thing, you know, or or what? Well, you know I think what a lot of it's nostalgia. I mean, look how how excited people are because Gargoyles is on there, right? The dark oh, and, dark. Yes. <laughs> and, and so that everyone's just like Gargoyles, Gargoyles. I watched it when I was a kid, you know. De- definitely nostalgia. You know? No, G Force is on there, and I haven't seen that since I was a kid. Gotcha, man. I'm tr- I'm like I said. Wait a minute, G Force is on here. <laughs> so I'm thinking like, wow, you know, I might, I might want to watch that, but it is what it is. It is also 8:54, so I'm gonna start outroing everybody because <laughs> this conversation got good. Yeah, this conversation got really good. 
And, uh, you know, it was, it's all because Larry joined in and, and made it interesting. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm just shooting the breeze, man. <laughs> oh, Larry's fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Shinobi, tell the people where you can be found, what you're doing, and all that good stuff. Okay, you can find me at on the Twitter, at on the Twitter, Instagram, DeviantArt, all in us at Shinobi Raccoon. Um, so change. I'm making some changes to my YouTube channel. Um, um, most of my streaming, most of my streaming is going to be done on Twitch and uh, D Live. So keep an eye out for those. All right, awesome. <laughs> Mr. Rebel Comics. Man, big things are on the horizon, E. Big things. Niobe Birthright. We're going to launch the Kickstarter in January. So Nice. Yeah, we're a little bit too close to Christmas now for me to do it. But, um, yeah, I mean, we only have two pages left to draw. And while we're finishing those up, we have nine pages already in color now, full color by Dan Elvera, who's worked for uh, Puppet Master, the title mm -hmm. Puppet Master from Action Lab Comics, and some Grim Fairy Tale stuff from Zenoscope. So proud to have him on the team. And so, yeah, man, Niobe Birthright is going to launch in January. We've got covers from Steph Wilson, Paul Green, R.B. White, Samir Simone. There's going to be a blank cover, of course. And then when that's all wrapped up, we're going to bring it to Indiegogo. And we're going to nice. have Josh Spencer is going to come back and do another Indiegogo exclusive cover. And if you want to learn more all about that, then just go ahead and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> We'll love you for it. All right, awesome dude. Mr. Manuel Correa. Why am I am I shilling for this person? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody likes Larry, man. Uh, oh, there we go. All right. So <clears throat> you guys can find me on Good Dog Press. And I guess if uh Jimmy's not gonna be on Monday night, maybe I'll make an appearance on Monday night. You got it all week, all next week. I'll be maybe, able. I'll, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe I'll do a Monday night stream. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'll just hop on there. Manny See and the Dingo. That's not, not yet. That's <laughs> not yet. It's coming, but it's not yet. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. So you guys can get me on Twitter, Good Dog Press, and Unbreathable Skunk Girl on Instagram. So thank you for having me on as usual and i hope you like your commission the way it's coming out oh yeah i'm digging it i mean this is the back of the cover and this is the front of the cover i gotta get some photographs of the guns that what what kind of gun does he have anyways it don't matter man you can give him whatever you want well what, what would be the right gun for him though i want to make sure he's got the right gun man give him 50 cows like uh get him dust eagles just like skunk girl man okay i can do that Make it, make it a matching set. So I hope it's to your approval. I like it, dude. I'm actually digging it. Hope it's to your approval. <laughs> there you go. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. And of course, my name is E. Ortiz. I can be found here on YouTube. Uh, we, can, uh, we can also be found as uh, JRecon51 on Twitch and D Live. You can uh, find me on Twitter as colorblind underscore E. And of course, ERT's arts on uh, Instagram and Facebook, and uh, we multicast. So if YouTube is not your thing, you can catch us on D Live, simul on simulcasting on D Live and Twitch, whatever your platform is. We're trying to be very conducive, and we're trying to figure out what we're gonna do with all these rule changes with YouTube and Twitch and all that stuff to find a conducive environment where we can just have fun and continue to stream and make beautiful things happen so with that being said i hope everybody has a good evening god bless and good night Aloha. have a good bye day bye.